What's up guys, welcome back to One Neil TV and as you can see we are starting 2020 off with a bang. Joining us today, Gulchan Kocha. Pronounce it right. Not bad, not bad for first attempt, yeah. Uh, to watch a few first videos. Yeah. 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 Um, so she's been great enough to join us today for an interview at the Victory office too. So I'm a Victory fan. What, what do you, who do you go for now? Do you always oh. change this? I don't know, Tully, 60 City, 40 Victory. So he's a City fan and Luke's a City fan, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> um, so we just got to ask a few questions, sit back, enjoy. Hey, it's alright, as long as they've supported football, it doesn't really matter what team they support. Yeah, and City don't win much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for those who don't know, a bit of a backstory on your career. Yeah, so um, I played at Vichy for nine years, so current record holder for games. Mm. Um, Natasha Dowie is slowly creeping up. It was 66 appearances yep. for Vichy. Yep, so... Um, Proud to be holding that at the moment. Uh, currently working full time as community football and diversity manager at Melbourne Victory. Yep. So really enjoying that. And uh, through my football career, I've also represented Turkey um, on 16 occasions. So I've got a dual citizenship. So I'm pretty fortunate in that aspect. And um, currently playing for Calder United in the NPL. Yeah. Um, well, we've got to ask you know, what what kind of led you towards picking Turkey over Australia to represent? Uh, when I was 19, I got the call up and at that point in my life, I didn't really have the opportunity to play for the Matildas. Um, so being a 19-year-old starting in a senior squad, it was um, a no-brainer to say yes, fly the seas and play some football in Europe. I guess you weren't complaining. Yeah. Look, looking back on that now, is there anything to kind of regret it, I guess, or do you want to change anything? I don't regret it. I just um, believe that I probably took it for granted a little bit. Mm. Uh, it got to a point where traveling so much overseas because every time I played um, I was pretty much traveling every two weeks for two years two to three years So two weeks in Australia two weeks in Turkey constantly um, and as a teenager I just didn't Soak in the experience as much as I wish I did. Yeah, no, fair enough. Good point did, what? did you prefer playing like walking out to play for Turkey or walking out to play for victory when you played? It's a different feeling like I was proud to wear both jerseys um, for Turkey it uh, was a bit more f for my family it meant a lot as well because it's where they were born so the first time uh, I played was against Austria in Austria and when the national the Turkish national anthem came on I was like wow this is this is really happening and the type of football obviously you're playing with the best in the world in regards to women's football so um, Privilege to play um, both teams and wear both jerseys, but yeah, can't yeah, in there, especially in their own way. Yeah, so like, correct me if I'm wrong, 16 appearances for Turkey, so like, it seems like you were kind of a regular as of such. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, so. So I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, that's a big achievement too, I guess. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to uh, play in the starting 11 and constantly um, be playing, so mm. it was good, can't complain. Um, so now, I guess, Massive in women's football. I know, I know you do like tournaments, appearances, and stuff. Because my sister actually met you a couple of years ago. Oh, awesome! One of the little tournaments. Um, so, women's football. What do you think of it now in Australia? Um, obviously, with the likes of Sam Kerr going to Chelsea, I think beating Arsenal four 0 Yeah. <laughs> scoring. Um, what are your thoughts of women's football currently in Australia, and what can we do to kind of improve that? So um, Sam going over, she's a phenomenal player and an amazing representation of the Matildas and uh, women's football as a whole. Um, I almost feel like sometimes with women's football in Australia we take two steps forward and one step back. Yeah. So the W League was very strong um, at a certain point and it could possibly be with the lifestyle of the money involved in regards to football overseas. Um, we have had the CBA uh, and increasing the wages for the, the W League, but still we're increasing, but then they're increasing as well. So um, to be able to play football at a professional level where that's all you do and that's your full-time job, um, just at the moment overseas is just uh, probably a, bit, a little bit more appealing yeah. and a lot more plays around the world are going there, unfortunately, but the Matildas are amazing. So Do you think that's kind of a similar situation with the, with the A League? Where Because I feel like a couple of years ago, it was, I feel like that was about a blow off, like it looked really good. Yeah. And then slowly now it's kind of reached that point again. Because I know like all of our mates who weren't really soccer fans, yeah. really start to go. And then now it's kind of, I don't know, so we've heard Kesko Honda last year, who was yeah. in the victory, he said, got to get rid of the salary cap. 
Yeah. So I think similar to the W League, would you say there's two get two steps forward? Yeah. Step back. And also other sports are changing things up there. Again, the money involved, the sponsorships involved, everything involved is everyone's progressing and hopefully we just kind of do a little bit more than what we're kind of expected or can do and just just all guns blazing go forward. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um when you were like playing for Victory in Turkey, was there a difference in like coaching styles and like how you tactically set up in games? Yeah, definitely. So um, in Europe, it's a lot more tactical and technical. Whereas I was going there and I was the fittest player on the team, but technically, uh, the girls were a little bit better um, in what I was good at. And then here, it's our the physicality and the fitness and we ha- that we have. Um, as Australian footballers is unbelievable. So I, when I went overseas and played for Turkey and then came back, I was always coming back as a better player because I was being provided with something that I was kind of lacking here when I was playing. And yeah, you played every position pretty much, correct? Except goalkeeper. Except goalkeeper. Yeah, except goalkeeper. Um, so I went from pretty much throughout my footballing career from striker, now I'm playing centre back. So Which yeah. position did you enjoy the most? At the moment, in all honesty, um, I'm enjoying centre back because the more I talk, the less I have to do. Yeah. So it's um, <laughs> and with experience, it makes it a lot easier to be able to read the game and give information. But probably the most thrilling position I play is on the wing. Mm. Too much running on the wing. Yeah, <laughs> stick away from the wing. Good fitness though. How would you say the quality was at W League compared to when you played international? You can't really, in all honesty, you can't really compare because at international level, all the players that are in the teams are meant to be the best within that nation or in that country. So, um, like, we played against Germany and, like, unbelievable where these players are playing against England and against Spain, Portugal. So, all these countries, these players are playing in the top leagues throughout the world. So, um, yeah. Did you find it, like, going into those games, like, big games like Germany, England, was it mentally, like kind of like taking a toll and like, how can we get over like these such like class players um, like pre-game did you think about it in, all, harder? in all honesty because I was 19 um, every game I was absolutely like so nervous yeah. so now playing when I was playing W League in the last um, couple of years I, like, you're not, you don't get nervous anymore as you get older because you've no. In the end, one team's going to win, one team's going to lose, or it's going to be a draw. There's nothing yeah. really to fear. Just if you play your position and do your role, then um, you've got nothing to really fear. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned before the current role with Victory. Yeah. So you retired a couple of years ago? Yep, two years ago. Two years ago. Um, so what exactly does that involve? Just don't so to it. I probably won't be able to list everything because yeah, um, yeah. it entitles a lot of um, different things. Uh, but. So match days are all the kids that go out uh, with the play, so the mascots and small side football, the Victory Crest, the Centre Circle Mat, so I um, manage that through our Club Victory program. So we've got 42 clubs throughout all of Victoria uh, that we, um, those clubs that we exclusively partner with and then we get our kids from there. Uh, we work with our multicultural ambassadors and community groups. So um, we've got a fair few of them doing uh, football programs throughout uh, their communities and we work, like I do work within schools yeah. and um, community centres. So there's, yeah, that's just kind of in a, in a bit of a nutshell. Um, and being a female player, there's a lot of uh, female initiatives that we're uh, trying to continue to do and trying to um, increase numbers. So that's, yeah, that's... Keep it simple yeah, and basic, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much, there's a lot. Pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Anything else to ask? When you were, like, starting off playing, when did you, like, kind of click in that, all right, this could be, like, a career and you could make lots of money out of it? Like, at what age did you find? Uh, like, you thought of that? 14. Yeah. 14. So, um, I was playing senior football at Ashburton, so the Women's Premier League before I went to NPL, at the age of... <laughs> Between 14 and 15. Yeah. Jeez. So um, when I first started, I couldn't even juggle the ball more than two times. Like I only started playing because my brother was playing and he used to give me crap because he was like, you're my sister, you're hopeless, I'm not going to 
play football or do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Pretty much like do anything. <laughs> so um, I decided that to be good enough because I really looked up to my brother, I'm going to start playing. And then funny enough, I made it somewhere with my football and he didn't. <laughs> um, but he's always supported me. So um, through that, yeah, got um, seen by the coaches at Ashburton and then went from Ashburton to Bandura and then Bandura to Calder. And then, yeah, so. So, I reckon there's a few people who play for Ashburn watching. I don't know if you've ever met. And that's when they met. Well, mates play. if we start from the start, so I started at Dingley City, oh, which is now Southern <laughs> Stars, yeah. um, Turkish club, being, having a Turkish background. They went to Sandringham, they went to Ashy. Then it sounds like a lot of clubs, but I've been yeah. playing for like over yeah. 20 years. So, <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm up older now. So, each club I've. Had a, so actually five years, under five years, called out this is my fifth year. And are you coaching now? Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, I was coaching at Downey City for about five years. And then uh, as you get older, priorities change and I'm getting okay. married next month. So um, congratulations. thank you. Uh, just trying to get my life sorted because it's all football. So trying to find a little bit of time to have a life outside of football. Enough. Um, uh, what would you say like how football when you started to now how the opportunities grown over time and developed and more information and opportunities that have been given to the younger people yeah so when I first started playing I started playing with the boys because it was hardly any uh, female teams and I don't really know any girls that played uh, there was another girl that started with me and after a week she was like no, no not doing this um, so I think the opportunity for girls has increased immensely um, Talking about Ashburn, Ashburn has an amazing uh, female program mm. and uh, so does a lot of our club victory clubs um, that we work with. And the only thing that I believe that could make it easier for the junior system is just the fees. So obviously um, there's a lot of talent, um, just unfortunately family circumstances or whatever circumstances I have, <clears throat> um, not being able to afford to play, uh, we're losing a lot of talent within um, the grassroots. And, yeah, well, I know, yeah. I know we're all involved in many of the yeah, clubs yep. around here. Um, yeah, it does, it does play a big part, so it's a good point you did raise. Um, I think. Are you boys playing at the moment or just coaching? Just school, yeah. we used to play club together. Yeah. I'm, I'm still playing coaching, so. Where are you playing coaching? Collingwood City. Awesome. And we've actually just, this year's our first year, we've got a senior women's team. Fantastic. So, yeah. Why don't us to come down around the session? Well, I it's on video, yeah. so <laughs> I can't. Now, now we have to. Now we have to. Um, I think we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. No it problem. was a pleasure. Our first player interview too. Um, another exciting one on the weekend. So, and once again, thank you to those who did subscribe, which they meant donation to the bushfires. Um, we did upload the receipt on on the Instagram. Um, so check that out and make sure you like, subscribe, follow. Looking to follow you. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram. Yep. Uh, Give Jack Koja underscore. And that's it. Cool. We're done.